Agave. Yes. Huh? Agave. Agave. It means something. Something. Hmm. <laughs> well, anyway, I finished just now. Excellent. And everybody's just getting into the meeting. Are you on? Yeah. 6.30 and we're open. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Give uh, Steve a minute or two. I saw him last night. He said he would be here. Diana, mm -hmm. I, I saw on, um, I think it was on Neighbor Next Door, someone was, I think, asking for contractor referrals, and um, integrity was mentioned twice. One gentleman uh, specifically uh, complimented you. Oh, thank you. Oh, I hadn't seen that. I'll look that up. That's nice. I mean, yeah. it's could have been last week, but okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for telling me. That's always nice to hear. Definitely. We had um, uh, we have too many splits, and I had Cerner uh, come out to do a what they call a clean and service, mm -hmm. and um, so I was you know I was here and uh, the guy had the one unit totally broken apart and there was a dead mouse. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and this is on the outside unit, you know, in amongst the wires, and uh, the gentleman said uh, the service guy said that. He was going to leave it there to discourage other mice. <laughs> I went and got a long reach uh, grabber that I have and stood on a stool and pulled it out. And then later they had gone to lunch and they had one of the, we have floor mounted units and they had it broken down and the uh, squirrel cage fan was sitting there. Uh, so I took a look at it and there was definitely, you know, a film of dust build up on the blades. I mean, it wasn't heavy, but it was there. So when they came back from lunch, um, I pointed that out. I even took a Q-tip to illustrate that they, there was a fair amount on there. And I asked them if it was reasonable for me to expect that they would clean that. And they said, well, if you'd like us to clean it, we will. <laughs> so they did clean that. And I asked them about the other two inside units they had already serviced. And they had not cleaned those. So I asked them to clean those. Long story short, I had a very nice chat with Susan Cerner, who is the president now of the company. Yeah. And uh, she was appalled. Um, she was very happy to get the comments. And the um, I think it's the supervisor of the department is coming out next week to double check the work. Oh, OK. <laughs> Oh, is Scott, Scott Cerner not there anymore? You mean is leading the... Susan Cerner is now the uh, the head of the head operation. But is Scott there or not? Or did I don't retire? know. But I asked to speak with... I don't know if I said the... Uh, I think I said the owner. Um, and I yeah, got I online and found that Susan Cerner's the name mentioned is okay. in charge. All right, um, maybe Steve will show up, but uh, 6.35, call the meeting to order. You have uh, minutes from the uh, 15th. Yeah, I'll catch up with that other one soon. 
<clears throat> I took a look at them, made a few minor changes. Anybody else have any comments, changes? No. If not, do I hear a motion to accept the minutes from the 15th? I make a motion to accept the minutes from the 15th. A second. A second. All in favor? Cook. Aye. Again. Aye. Quackenbush. Aye. Dalmas. Aye. Thank you. Becky, any uh, response uh, from the asbestos folks yet on the dam keepers? You no, know, I have not gotten anything. I have to follow up on that. I'm sorry. Right. Oh, I'm talking to the meeting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> earlier in the week, uh, Russ Wilson and I went out and um, made the uh, repairs to the roof shingles on the uh, West Schoolhouse. So that's taken care of. Um, did they looked, match the other? Did they match the other shingles perfectly? No. Okay. Well, first off, they're the architectural style. <laughs> he has. So they get to hold more lichen. Right. Right. Um, and you know they're they're not they're not the same color, but they're on the back side, so it'll be obvious where the repair was made. Hey, Steve. Good evening, Steve. So um, he and I looked at the um, the corner boards at uh, the uh, let's see that'd be the north east mm. corner. If I'm correct. Northwest. Uh, Northwest. I, I'm still, if I'm facing the building from um, Leverett Road, that's the you're right looking, side. You're looking south and north is behind you. Yeah. So whatever that corner is. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm assuming that, I mean, that is, that building belongs to town, correct, mm -hmm. Becky? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And For a few hundred it, years. Yeah. And it's not listed in as a historic, doesn't have historic listing, correct? Correct. So um, we can make a repair. I mean, it's going to look the same when we're done, but um, we don't have to follow any sort of other procedures, am I correct? Well, it depends, you know, how big it is and stuff. I mean, if you're doing, yeah, no, you don't. That's I fine. mean, it's, it's the two corner boards. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, we've discussed, uh, I already got a piece of wood that's at Russ's right now. And um, next Friday, we're going to tackle that. Right. The um, you're gonna prime both sides. Oh yeah. And and is next Friday two days from now, or is next Friday a week and two days from now? A week and two. Thank you. Two days from now is this Friday. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's how I think about it. <clears throat> the twenty first. Correct. Yeah. Okay, um, so we'll you know we'll we'll take care of that and um, yeah. Does anybody? Um, I was asking Russ about primers, and um, you know the Zinser brand. Yeah, what about it? Well, I think it's a pretty good primer. I've used it in the past. I was yes. getting oil base. Yes. I think that uh, has a better tendency to block tannin bleed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So then the question is, should I get a quart, which will then be, you know, belong to the town, or should I get a gallon? How much trim are you going to replace? Replace? Um, just two two corner boards. I mean, I got I bought a, a one by twelve by ten foot piece, which we're going to cut to do the two corner boards. 
So it's, I mean, I think a court would be plenty to back I prime. Agree. I agree. And prime mm -hmm. it. I don't know how many other projects where we'll need it. So I'll get a court. A court. And a throwaway brush. Um, I'll probably Unless... use one of my own brushes. Oh, okay. <laughs> you to and wash it out. Worry about, and wash it out with turpentine. Okay. Okay. Uh, Frank, any uh, progress on the spreadsheet? I started working on the other day, and I, was, I went back on my notes, and we agreed that if you look at the spreadsheet, I have it right here. Um, what we one thing is want to make sure we're doing the same thing is we're going to have a next to the action level the photos, right, and then to the next to that history. And we prior used to call photos and work done, but isn't that the same thing? History. No, I think I thought that the history was we would the original comment. <laughs> that had been made, and then there was re a repair done, that comment would be moved into history. Right, so in other words, if I, if one of them things is the uh, the angle of the uh, ductwork. Right. Uh, right, it was the wrong angle, and we noted that, we're gonna cut that out of the comments, stick it in history, and then underneath that, put Jamrod fixed on five something, just so we have a long running history of the project. This is this is for the exhaust flue from the boiler, right? In other words, I'm just giving you examples. So yes. we don't need two yeah. columns, is my thing. So I'll, I'll have that done next week. By next week, I was confused about the old thing said work done, and then we had added history too. So um, should we should we uh, change that to past history? I just know just history, but you know, it worked on in history and comments are all there. You'll 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 put the comment that you you'll cut you'll cut the comment out saying right. that the thing was a forty five degree right. angle, and then underneath that you're going to put Jamrod fixed it on April third. So right, good. I'll have that done by next week. Okay. Okay. So Jeff, I remember you sent me an email, uh, I think it was be just before the last meeting, which I didn't see. And um, you've taken care of the replacing the insulation on the mini splits at the fire department. <clears throat> Correct. Great. Check. Boom. Okay, and uh, so the door sill, um, I think I, had talked about this last time, but the door sill is done. The plugs are all uh, cut flush. Um, Leslie is very happy. Uh, there's just a couple minor things I need to do. Um, and Becky has a question. Um, I was in the old town hall yesterday and I noticed there's a bigger plug in the middle that's missing. Oh, really? Yeah, the big plug seems to be missing. When you say big so plugs. little plugs that are all about the size of the top of a pen, like this. And then there was one that was more like a coin size, right in the middle. That's where the pin goes down in. Oh, it has to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> and I put the pin in it. Okay, no problem. Yeah, still have to get a plate to put uh, on top of that. But yeah, that's that's where the pin goes. That's okay, right. good. I'm glad glad nothing's missing. Is it? And there was one extra. There was an extra. You know that little piece of wood that from there. All of them were filled, but there was one small extra one. Wait a minute. One. I'm not sure I understand. One of those plugs that you put back in to the little holes. 
where the where they had nailed? Well, we screwed it in and yeah, then and put plugs on top. Yeah. There was a plug sitting there, but there didn't appear to be any. There was any nothing. So maybe we plug. didn't uh, carry that away when we finished. Yeah. Because there were there were some extra plugs. Okay. Um, so there was a, I forget uh, the rain, but when it was exactly, but within the last couple of weeks, there was a heavy rain storm. And when the custodian came into the elementary school the next morning, there was water <clears throat> on the floor in the hallway adjacent the uh, courtyard where there's a window wall. <clears throat> And um, outside of that window wall, there's large gravel in lieu of any planting. And then I think a four by four, and then there's the concrete uh, area that slopes to the two catch basin drains. I could see right against the window in two locations, where there was a pile of leaf matter and debris suggesting that there had been a lot of water in that stone area. So the custodian was wondering if he should, on the inside, uh, put backer rod in and caulk all of that. When you look at it from the outside, there's a piece of flashing that comes from the base of the window assembly down over the edge of the concrete slab edge. So you can't really, you couldn't really try to seal it from the outside, I don't think. <clears throat> My concern about sealing it on the inside is that <clears throat> if that happens again, then water can get under the sill and be trapped or travel. And travel and you know who knows what effect it would have and <clears throat> i suspect that you know given these intense rainstorms with that are wind driven that we're now getting that that's not going to be a common occurrence and it would be better to just mop it up <laughs> You know, if we could somehow seal it, if it could somehow be sealed from the outside, that would make sense. But I think it less. Do you ahead. think this is part of the uh, drainage problem? We haven't vacuumed out yet. <clears throat> only if, only if those drains backed up enough to fully back up in the um, the concrete area, because the concrete's all sloping this way, so it'd have to back up and then get over and behind. You know, wouldn't the rain would have to be, the area that has the stone, we'll say is like this, mm -hmm. and straight up and actually extended past that stone area is the edge of the gutter. So it's not water <laughs> spilling over the gutter. Um, <clears throat> It's, it would have to be either, you know, a backup in the drain, yeah, a serious backup, or it's wind driven. Mr. Sullivan, question. When do you expect the vacuum truck? He is coming next week. Okay. Yay. He's aware that we're going to go visit the courtyard. Good. <laughs> as well as the other exterior underground drains. That's the correct. Great. Okay. Well, it'll be interesting to hear what they find. <clears throat> I tend to agree, Stephen, that I don't like the idea that back a rod and seal it on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's wait until let's not do anything until the, the vacuum truck and then see if we have this issue again. Yeah. Okay. Would, would you be able to get? Would you be able to get low expanding, uh, expansion foam on the outside to seal it? Well, I think, 
I'd have to go and look at it again, but I think you'd have to take a good bit of the gravel out. Okay. In order to get the can under the, you know, it's, it's a flashing piece that turns down. Yep. And right now I'd say the, the gravel pieces are like this. So you'd have to take enough of that out to be able to get the can up under. So and, probably, I mean, it would be a nasty job, but probably the gravel over the years is silted up so it doesn't have any drain in it. So the water doesn't go anywhere. Well, I think if, if I remember what the custodian said, that used to be a planted area. And he didn't like that. And he he apparently uh, was instrumental in that being ripped out. And it's it's large. I mean, there are small rocks. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's not gravel. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will um, touch base with the um, superintendent, let him know that right now, we're not going to do anything and the vacuum truck is going to be coming soon. And hope for a nice dry summer. Hey. Been a long day, Jeff. Yeah, it was a long drive. We left early to come back. From New I'm York? Tired. Huh? From New York City? No, no, no. We were in Harrisburg. Oh, that is we a long to... ride. Yeah, it's about six and a half, six and three quarter. Hmm. Had to go visit mother in law. My aunt used to live there. I used to visit her. Nice place to visit. Wouldn't want to live there. Right. <laughs> Okay, moving on um, to the uh, electrical system concerns at Town Hall and Old Town Hall. <laughs> so, do we um, do we want to pursue that uh, in terms of getting uh, estimates from an electrician to upgrade the panel boxes that need upgrading? You know, eliminate the uh, fuse boxes. Uh, the um, the pushmatic box, and find out if the electrician has any other recommendations um, as sort of the first project where we're going to um, use some of our forty thousand. So I thought we were supposed to finish our review of all the buildings first and meet with. A select board before we go picking major projects. Is that not correct? Um, it might be correct. Where's the um, Becky? It sounds, yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, what? That's what you've stated in the past, Stephen, too. I'm sorry? I think that's what you've been. I know that's what I had stated, but then I remember, um, I guess maybe part of it's because. We had talked about the electrical issues and maybe when we were at town hall, I think I remember Jeff's, Jeff saying something to the effect of, well, he, he would see that as being a priority thing. And then I talked about the uh, only other electrical area of concern was old town hall. And, um, <clears throat> you know, should we start pursuing that? But I can um, try to get on my high horse and, um, finish up the inspections but it, <laughs> when you said it was a priority jeff do you see it as a safety concern no i kind of meant priority for the first thing we should do in the town hall okay i agree okay. i think we just finished finished the list um do you think maybe we should get estimates on the things you think are priorities so when you we do when you go to the select board you'll have a sense of cost when you say you mean like all the different things 
or just the electrical? Just the priority ones, like the electric. Well, there's a lot of priority ones. So I think that would be um, a big, 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 big task looking at the spreadsheet now. Um, I think as a group, we should pick, finish the buildings as a group, pick, pick the top five. Oh, we know the dam keeper's roof is one. Right, but that uh, might be a project that um, we'll be able to... Uh, Right. Yeah, but we'll still we, we, volunteer work. We'll, do, we'll we'll still have to buy. You know, we'll still have to go to uh, the farm supply store for the metal roofing, right? Right. Right. Yes. So that's so you. Know, so that that'll have some cost. But I think yeah. if we pick uh, the top five, the electrical probably is going to be the top one, and find out what else we we feel we want to fix with the fire department, uh, highway department dam keepers and then once we pick the top five um the big ticket item make, that, make, make what, that recommendation then we make and then make the recommendations and then we'll know where, where how much dollars we you know we'll, we'll have a, a general thing and that's so we'll, we'll give us we can go from dollars from there um just to let them know what we want to do to spend the monies that they granted us or the town granted us So does that mean pushing to complete the rest of the chart? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sounds Which like all falls back to Stephen. Yep. And Frank. Yes. <laughs> Which I think is doable in the next few weeks. Um few weeks? I was thinking if we could get it finished this summer. Okay, yeah. But, yeah, I got there. I yeah, no, actually, I, I, my, my, me, me, me putting the formats in the next few weeks. Um, I'm booked every yeah. weekend this this month uh, doing ceramic firings or building kilns um, through the end of June into July. But uh, yeah, if we get this done uh, and present them, probably uh, August maybe. Especially when we do some of the action levels are very low. Um, and I think we know what the top five is going to be, so. You do? Well, the electrical. Yeah. The, da the dam keeper's roof. Well, that doesn't count. <laughs> that does not? count. <laughs> it's still going to be, it's still going to be, uh, you know, Five eight hundred dollars worth of materials, or a thousand. Anna said originally, with if we were doing uh, asphalt roof, but it'll be cheaper. Actually, I have the slightest idea how much metal roofs cost now per square foot. Um, right, well, you know, if if it turns out that the felt paper has asbestos, then we're probably going to have that remediated. So that means we're going to strip it or have it stripped by a remediator. And at that point, maybe we just do the shingles on it because that would probably be less uh, costly than you know, in terms of uh, materials than, than the metal roof. I thought if we, we found it was asphalt, I mean, it, we, we did have a problem with some asbestos. I thought we were gonna enclose it with the metal roof and leave it at that and move forward. Well, I would defer, Becky, what, what would be your position if we discover that the felt has asbestos fiber content? I, since I did not, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what happened to my guy, because usually I, 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 I searched my emails, I expected to have seen a report from him. Mm -hmm. So it's, and I haven't had asphalt paper. So if there's asbestos in the paper, like there was, because there was asbestos in one layer of paper that was totally encapsulated at the school and the advice was not to touch it. Um, so I get- so, yeah, so not to touch the uh, dam keeper's house and just put a, a metal roof on top of it. I I'm, They could advise that is all I'm, Thank okay. You. Yeah, if that's the advice, then I definitely 
see going with the metal roof. That's what we talked about the last time after I jokingly volunteered the highway department to take a, a backpack blower and blow the shingles right off. We, <laughs> talked, we, we talked about how if it, did, if it did have the asbestos, we would do the metal roof and leave it so that would last 50 to 100 years and it would be yeah. someone else's problem later. Right. <laughs> And Jeff thought standing seam was nice looking. No, too expensive for this. Too expensive, yeah. Okay. Now you just do strapping, screw the strapping to the existing roof, put the corrugated deck on. You want to get real fancy and get a hot dip corrugated deck. But I think just a, a, a nice, I stare, at a, I stare at this building all the time, so a nice green would be nice. Mm, yep. We can probably do that. Mm -hmm. Bombers always has green in stock. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good color then, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, anybody have any unanticipated items to discuss? <clears throat> I have some questions for the committee and Becky. So have we received anything from the the guys that are going to spoon to do the painting Escobar? on the school? Um, no, but I talked to them, and he's been working through the values, and will have that to us uh, by the end of the week. I mean, he'll have everything. That was the time, the one taking the most time. But they'll be he'll be sending over the schedule, you know, the t um, calendar, the schedule of values. And then the materials list, I think it is. It's the, the submittals. Submittals. Or what products he's going to use. Right. Yeah. So they're okay. almost done. Okay. You know, send them out to you when I get them at the end of the week or Monday. Okay. And then my other question was, did we get a copy, Stephen, did you get a copy of the contract for the roof? I mean, for the painting? I don't think I did. Yeah, I didn't either. So, Becky, can we get a copy of that? Because sure. one of my questions is, do we have retainage in that contract? Um, I'm not sure if we do in that one. Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. What does retainage mean? When they Next they one. hold the like the five percent in the library contract oh, that they okay. on each invoice. But retainage with, for a hundred thousand dollar contract that's going to be done in a month. It's not going to be done in a month. That's why I want to schedule values because they said they were going to be at least two months. So they're going to be invoicing. Two months. Partial, and we need to schedule values to. Yep. And we need to know if we can claim retainage. I will. Send it we to didn't you. do retainage on the roof and it kind of but they only submitted one invoice so do I understand retainage uh, then um, is not released until after we do a final inspection and are satisfied no yes. typical retainage is released um when the contractor is at substantial completion, or you would release part of the retainage, kind of depends how big the retainage got to be. Mm -hmm. But the purpose of retainage is to make sure the contractor actually finishes the job. Got it. Yeah, so we haven't so, released the retainage job in the past until the checklists are all complete. So when the painter says he's done and we go by with it and we do a, a final punch list and say, you know, more paint there, uh, sand, you know, we you didn't caulk those holes and all that. We give them a long list, a long punch list that we think the job is finished and therefore we held back the retainage till that, that is done. Is that correct, Jeff? You could do it that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm on a longer job with something like that, 
your you submit a bill based on work you've completed as shown by like a percentage per division and right. then if the client agrees they're agreeing that we've completed that percentage which equals that percentage of value but then the check that they write is for if the retainer just 10 percent, they write a check for 90 percent of the total value so we all agree that the amount's correct but i only get the check for 90 percent of it and then that retainage is reduced or released i don't know at the i guess when you said it's substantial completion or at the or with the final payment Boy, on the internet project, I think it was almost a year we were <laughs> trying to get them to finish. Mm. And they were in the retained, they were waiting on retainage that whole time. But they didn't it didn't seem to impact them. They just were slow as can be. But at least they eventually showed up, right? Oh yeah. Oh, they they got it all done. Yeah, they were so great without, doing the work. It was the back office that was terrible. Yeah. Without retainage, they may never have shown up. I was very glad to have internet right before COVID hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weren't we all? <laughs> Jeff, any other questions? No. Anybody else with anything? I got I got something. Yeah. I turned the mini split on in the office of the highway department for the first time in two months today. And I had a mini volcanic eruption. What? I had black ash blowing all over the desk over me and on the floor. It's What's it's got a lot of black is? mold in it. And it was oh. it was uh just like a volcano. Gross. Did you check the filter? <laughs> it's, more the filter. Just, it's more than just the filter. The whole thing is just gross. Um, I think... I, um, well, we know where Stephen's mouse is. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I, um, when I looked at that previously, Steve, I it was... Where, where the output is, it was all moldy. Um, so this was, you know, last year at some point. Um, and I think that somebody, if Jamrog is, is that whose service is that? I bet yours hasn't been serviced, Steve. I don't, I don't think it's ever been serviced. That Tim didn't have to call him in to service yours. No, that's what, well, it was at least three or four years ago, it, the little drain tube got plugged up and the thing was dripping water inside the office and that's how the black mold started. Okay, then. So we got to get them out, somebody out to clean yours. I, um, I can tell you that uh, to do it, uh, clean and service, uh, it's from Cerner for a unit, uh, outside unit, and one inside uh, distribution unit is $200. Beautiful. And I suspect after um, what I uh, pointed out to them, uh, they will, I mean, th their interest is in doing a good job. I, I feel pretty certain. I mean, I got very good response from the owner of the company today. Or the head of the company. Um, we just, you heard what I was talking about, Becky? About I just, heard the, the ending, Susan. I, I, I was uncertain. No, I didn't hear it all. Well, basically, we just had our two units serviced by Cerner. And um, during the time they were here, I realized that, or I was concerned whether or not they were going to clean the fan, um, the squirrel cage fan. And um, I asked them about it and um, they said, well, if you'd like, we'll clean it. And I said, I'd like. So then I asked them about two other units that they had already serviced and asked them if they had cleaned those fans and they had not. So I asked them to clean those, which they then did. 
And then did you hear about the mouse? I heard the mouse. That's the one okay. thing. Okay. So so I I um <clears throat> called the company today and spoke uh at length with the chief or owner, Susan Cerner, and she was uh very distraught to hear that, but very happy that I called. And next Tuesday, their service manager is coming out to double check the work that was done and make sure there aren't any uh, issues with the work that was done. That sounds like a good response. Yeah, mm -hmm. a very good response. So I will call Cerner. Yeah, and if you call them and, you know, they're going to come out on a specific time, so let me know because I don't mind showing up. And um, <laughs> I think... yeah, I don't keep them driving by. <laughs> <laughs> My car is unmarked. And you say, there's that cage wheel guy again. Right. So I know it's only uh, 7 11, but um, I know Jeff's had a long day. I've had a long day. I've got a lot to do tonight. Uh, Linda and I are hanging our show tomorrow. Um, so I'd, I'd like to motion we end the meeting at 7 11. Thank second. you. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Cook? Aye. Again? Aye. Quackenbush? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Almas I. Thank you, everyone. So Thank we'll you. have a meeting in um, two weeks. Yep. Great. Great. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank Great. you. Bye, Go Becky. Celtics.